All praise is due to Allah, the one God whom we seek his help, we seek his forgiveness, and we send salutation upon all the prophets, starting from Prophet Adam all the way to the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it's really an honor to be here with my brothers and sisters and the special invitation that I got and received from Islamic Union of Hong Kong and as Sister Basma, may Allah give a reward that she mentioned that, believe me, I consider Hong Kong as a second country now, mashallah. As I visited in one year more than five times, I believe, Hong Kong, back and forth, meeting with the brothers, being with the, mashallah, the elders, learning from them, their wisdom, and also going to the universities, engaging myself with the students, seeing how the street now going on, getting into the da'wah, getting into the street, doing da'wah. So, alhamdulillah, I can say that this is one of the, really, this is one of the blessed countries by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you can do everything freely, easily, you can move, you can talk, 
there's no restriction if you do everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for me and for you to get involved in da'wah and call people towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only and only for his sake. Ameen. Now, I also noticed that I have been given very difficult time, to be honest with you. Because my lecture and my presentation is right after the food. Right? And for me, it's no problem. If you would like to sleep, if you would like to just have a nap, no problem. Plus, if you would like to snore, no problem. I am better than Brother Firdos. So, inshallah ta'ala, today we can call it a mini lecture or a mini workshop. I will talk with you, discussing with you things that's related with da'wah. What is the da'wah is all about? Why we are so concerned about da'wah? Why we have to get involved into da'wah? And what is da'wah? What exactly it means? Sorry? MashaAllah. By the way, sisters are always active. And brothers, MashaAllah, I will not say anything. Always I hear you know, people saying things from here. From here, I will hear snow after, after sometimes people snoring. So Alhamdulillah, today we will talk about if we are getting into the you know, da'wah and involving ourselves into the da'wah and what is this da'wah all about. We just have to keep in our mind that da'wah should come with, with what? Mercy. And mercy. This is always good. Da'wah does not mean only that I have things in my hand and I'm walking. Take brother, take brother, take brother, take brother, and that's it. I finish my job and I go back home. No, this is, this is not really da'wah. If da'wah does not have wisdom, and mercy in it, then okay, yes, you're exactly doing those who are standing outside the street, a new opening of a restaurant or new opening of something, and you're there walking and just giving. They don't care, it's just a, you know, specific hours they are doing, and then they will go back home. So we have to understand what is da'wah and wisdom because it's very important thing that we have to adopt in our life and we have to make it as our path. What is your path? What is your path? What, what I mean by this? What is your path in this world? What do you want to do? Where are you going? Where are you heading to? And by the way, I will not talk today. I will make you talk. You know? So I will just make sure that you are not sleeping. So I will keep asking you, what is your path? What's your path? What, what are you doing here? What are you doing in this dunya? What do you want to do? Where do you want to reach? MashaAllah, okay. <laughs> Brother Abdullah? Siratul Mustaqim. Siratul Mustaqim, MashaAllah. This is the straight path, okay. But where this straight path will lead you, sister? Jannah. Jannah, inshaAllah, we're all asking for that. To go to Jannah, is it just a door you open and you step in? Well, there's a process, there's a whole way to go to Jannah, right? Okay. The path, our old path, by the way, alhamdulillah, we are all, mashallah, into some work, universities, uh, professions, and we are dealing, you know, in a, in a different uh, things in our life. A person is a doctor, a person is a, uh, an engineer, a person is an IT professional, and whatsoever, alhamdulillah, that's good. Islam does not stop you from this. In fact, Islam encourages you to do it. You know what's the first verse revealed in, uh, in Quran, in Islam? What was the first verse? Iqra, mashallah. What Iqra means? Read. Subhanallah. And this is, <laughs> I have a little bit issue with it because the, the whole, if you take any tafsir, if you take any translation, may Allah reward all the ulama, they translated read as Iqra, which is right. But read does not only mean Iqra. Read means, or Iqra means read, recite, educate yourself, develop yourself, update yourself, upgrade yourself, take your step, yourself step by step into higher level. If we just say iqra, then we become just a normal, ordinary Muslim or a person who just open a book, a Quran, hadith, whatsoever you call it, you read and you close it, you are just reading it for barakah and you just keep it back to the shelf. What you just did? 
I read Quran, Alhamdulillah. What do you understand? Nothing. You're just reading. So it's not only reading. Reading, understanding, developing, updating, upgrading, this all comes under the word Iqra. So there is no harm if you are into your professional and you want to be the top IT person, MashaAllah, do it. Islam encourages you. If you want to do, if you want to be the best PhD professor in the university or in the in, the, in your country, Bismillah, do it. Islam encourages that. So we have to update ourselves in our way. But the best path, the best way for all of us, besides being an engineer or a doctor or whatsoever, the best path is da'wah. The best path. And da'wah is an honor. It's an honor by itself. But who is honoring da'wah? Honor from who? From uh, Islamic Union. They will give you a certificate. It's an honor. Who is giving you that honor? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From who? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now, if someone is honoring you, I will be very glad, to be honest with you, if I will get a certificate, for example, from Islamic Union of Hong Kong, that, you know, mashallah, this is something as an appreciation uh, certificate. I will be super happy. I will make a big poster of it and hang it in my you know, office or in my home or somewhere that people can see that I got from Hong Kong and from the Islamic Union of the Hong Kong a certificate. I might take selfie with it and send it to the people, you know. Imagine you are getting honor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created us. My and your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And very famous ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِنَّ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّ لِي الْمُسْلِمِينَ Who is better than the one who speech, talk, invite people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and does righteousness, and then he will say, I am among the Muslims. So this is the best job ever a person can involve himself into it. A question. A person might think right now while he's sitting and he is, mashallah, an engineer or a doctor or PhD or a lawyer or whatsoever. Shall I quit my job and get involved in da'wah? No, I'm not saying that. But da'wah, it has its own criteria. You can be a lawyer but a da'iyah at the same time. You can be a doctor and a da'iyah at the same time. You can be an engineer and a da'iyah at the same time. I met a sheikh. Mashallah, amazing shape from, from India. He is, mashallah, working hard to establish a new university and his aim is completely different than any other person. What is his aim? He said, I want to make a proper jamia. Jamia means uh, a university that has all the uh, faculties. A proper, a proper university with all the faculties, medicine, this and that, everything, but with Islamic understanding, with Islamic basics in it. Because I want at the end, when a person graduates, he's an engineer, but on the day of, uh, on the day of Friday, he gets inside the masjid, he gets on the mimbar, and he starts giving khutbah. He does not mind that the doctor finishing his operation, come out from the operation, change his clothes, and get into the masjid, gets up on the mimbar, and then start giving khutbah. This is a wonderful idea. This is what we want. That every one of us, yes, we work in our field, we should not leave the dunya, because this is where we are living in. But at the same time, we should adopt da'wah in our talk, in our skills, and whatsoever that we are doing. This is the best job that you can do along with your own profession. The best path is the da'wah. What was the path of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? If you see a question mark, get ready, because I'm asking you. What? Sure? Are you sure? What was the path of Rasulullah? Da'wah, da'wah, da'wah. Anything else? Tawheed. Yes, the oneness of Allah, abolishing the shirk, uh, uh, you know, uh, breaking the idols, mashallah, that's number one. But this comes under the da'wah. Nothing else? Ummatun wahida, one of the amazing things that Allah, uh, Allah's Messenger wants us to be Ummah wahida, one Ummah, one nation. What else? Keep thinking. Sorry? Manners. MashaAllah, there is a hadith of Rasulullah I have been sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fulfill the manners. That's also true. If you think 
the Prophet ﷺ came and he established by Allah's, oh, Allah's commandment, Salah, right? Salah was established in Islam. The uh, Zakat was established in Islam. All the obligatory things that you, you can imagine, Hajj, Salah, Zakat, fasting and everything. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him that, Ya Muhammad, there is a path of you. There is some specific path for you. Qul hadihi sabili. Say, O Muhammad, to everyone, this is my path. What was the path of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Is it praying day night? Is it fasting every day or every second day? Is it zakat? Is it hajj? This is all obligatory and yes, you have to do it whatsoever. You like it, you don't like it, you have to do it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Qul hadihi sabili. Say, this is my path. What is the path, ya Allah? Adru ila Allah. I call people, I give da'wah to the people to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is, we have to keep in our mind that Allah Almighty, first of all, the first ayah is an honor. That, what was the first ayah? Who can remind me? The first ayah that we saw, the honoring ayah? Wake up. The first ayah, say it in English. And who is? Better. And who's the better in the speech? The one who call upon Allah or call people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is now Allah telling Muhammad by himself that Ya Muhammad وسلم, this is your path. What is your path? Da'wah. Adru ilallah. Now, Allah Almighty praised those who are working in the field of da'wah. So by automatically, if you are sitting here, and you just make intention that, okay, within my schedule that I have 5, 10, 8 hours a day, I'll give one hour for da'wah. Not necessarily that physically that you have to come to the street and involve yourself in da'wah. Your idea could be a da'wah. Your effort could be a da'wah. A web page could be a da'wah. Sitting and sending some messages could be a da'wah. Uh, creating something in, in websites, doing something in your field, application, anything. Da'wah is everything. You can involve yourself in da'wah. You know what? There's a dentist in Kuwait. There is a dentist in Kuwait, very clever. Now you know dentists deal with what? Dentists deal with what? Teeth. Mouth, right? Always when you see someone coming who's not a Muslim, could be a Filipino, could be an Indian, could be a whosoever, he's not a Muslim. He makes him lay down, he makes him open his mouth, and he takes the machine, and then he puts, and he said, do you like Islam? Uh, 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 what, what do you think about Islam? Islam is good, right? Uh, he cannot say anything now. Right? So look, he is using his own skills into that. And that, you know, that guy is a poor guy. He cannot say anything because he's having all the equipments and machine and scissor and everything. So he, of course, he has to say. Uh, so at the end, he will say, okay. Once he's done, he will treat him in a nice thing, and he will take one of the one of the thing, uh, one of the tablets that he have in his office or in his uh, clinic. He will take and he said, brother, read about it. And if you need anything, this is my business card, call me. He is doing his own da'wah in his own way. So da'wah is not only that specific in the street da'wah or on the stage. This is, you can do it in anywhere, subhanAllah. So this is one of the best things that you can add into your own field in your life. All the prophets definitely, they have different work. All the, all the prophets, they have different work in their life. For example, Adam alayhi salam, he was a farmer. Nuh alayhi salam, he was a carpenter. Daud alayhi salam, he was a blacksmith. Adris alayhi salam, he was a tailor. Musa alayhi salam, he was a shepherd. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he was a shepherd and a businessman. And then, of course, he was a Nabi. And all of them, they were Nabi. All of these people, they are just working. They are doing on daily basis, you know, whatsoever they are doing, you know, their, their job. But once they received the revelation, that's it, they are dedicated to it because they understood the importance of it. But of course, they are Anbiya, they are Nabi. We will not say that, okay, we should, you know, resign from our work. No, this I said at the beginning, we are not looking for it. But everyone, they used to work. And then they used to work and then they give da'wah, but they give da'wah the priority in their life. But all of them kept their field in a side and gave priority to the one job, which is da'wah. And this is what we are talking about today, that how important it is. Because once you receive a da'wah, or once you receive a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believe me, by Allah, those who are involved in da'wah, it's automatically because da'wah by itself contains mercy. As I said at the beginning, wisdom and mercy. Da'wah by itself, it, it, it has the responsibility. Because if you have a responsibility, 
and if you have a mercy in it, and if you know that how important this is for a brother, for a sheikh, for a doctor, for whosoever, for a sister, I will go and, and deal with these people with mercy, with wisdom. So, the da'wah should be on our top list. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Nuh alayhi salam, Nuh alayhi salam, what he said? Nuh alayhi salam, he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, inni, what exactly he said in the ayah? Amazingly, I hope no one heard you because I want them to think. He said, Rabbi inni, oh Allah, I, I what? I built masajid day night. I fasted every day and prayed every night. Did he say that, you know, I fasted every day, prayed every night. I built masajid so that people can come and worship you. It will be a great place. That's all important. But he said, Qala inni da'awtu qawmi laylan nahara. Oh Allah, I gave da'wah to my people day night. I gave my da'wah to my people day night. <coughs> Now, for how long Nuh alayhi salam lived? 950 years. MashaAllah. 950 years, it's not the age of Nuh alayhi salam. This was his da'wah. 950 years da'wah. Probably he is more than 1,000 years old or something like that. But can you imagine 950 years da'wah? وَمَا أَمَنَ مَعَهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ And only few accepted Islam with him. SubhanAllah. And sometimes we do da'wah in your field, a person who is in my field will go to the street, talk to the people, uh, talk here and there. Just imagine if a da'iyah amongst us, it will happen to you. You will go to your field, your professional field, your own field, into da'wah. When you start giving da'wah to the people and there is no response from the other side, unfortunately, we just need da'wah. We say there is no result. And this has happened with, with a lot of uh, cases with me in, in Kuwait. A lot of, mashallah, young brothers like you, mashallah, they are very active, they want to get into the da'wah and this and that. I want to give da'wah, I said, well, we have a criteria. If you want to give da'wah, you have to join a course. That is a three-week course every Friday, each day, uh, eight hours. So eight plus eight plus eight. Okay, I, I'm ready to do it. Okay, so this shows us that he is serious about it. He, alhamdulillah, came for three weeks. After three weeks, alhamdulillah, you have been trained. Let's get into the ground. Let's go to the field. We went to the market. So he was with us, mashallah, again, very energetic, going, talking to the people, giving the, you know, pamphlets and whatsoever. First week, second week, third week, month, two months, no result. No result. After three months, we didn't see this brother. Where, where is he? Calling him, no answer, messaging him. Yes, I'm a little bit busy here and there. Once we got hold, you know, upon this brother, Brother, what, what's wrong with you? So he was disappointed. That, you know, from last three months, I spent three weeks to get all the courses and everything for eight, eight, eight hours, and then I'm giving da'wah for I don't know how many weeks, and there is no response. I told him, there is no ikhlas in your heart. Because you are doing it for shahada, numbers of the shahada. You are doing it because people will say that, oh, mashallah, Muhammad, Ali, Khalid, whatsoever, that, you know, so-and-so person accepted Islam from him. You should do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it. If you're thinking about number and shahada and how many people, then you will get disappointed because you know you are just waiting for someone to praise you or say, mashallah, good job, brother, good job, you know. No, 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 no. You have to do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why he gave the uh, Nuh alayhi salam, why he gave full time to da'wah and he didn't focus on the other things because other things, fasting, you know, praying, all the other rituals will help who? Will help the person itself, right? If I'm praying day night, if I'm fasting, if I'm reading Quran, if I'm doing all the good things, you should do it, by the way. I'm not saying don't do it. But if you do all these things, my brothers and sisters, it's only you or me will get benefit from it. That's it. And I'll tell you something very important that you have to keep in your mind. Only being salih is not good. Salih, what does salih mean? Who can tell me in Arabic language? Salih. Righteous person, good person, right? Salih. And we have also a Nabi called Salih. Salih is one thing, and Muslih is something else. Muslih, what the Muslih means? Same word, 
and there's me in the, before it to become Muslim. Who can tell me Muslim? Wake up. I cannot hear. Wake up. What? Renew. 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 Reformer. The one who do salah. Salah. Linguistically, salah means the one who's good by himself. Salah. You know. Reform. Sorry. Reform. Reform. Muslim reform. The one who correct things. So salah is a higher degree because he is by himself. Mus salah. Sorry. Muslim is a higher degree because salah by himself, and then he start doing things right. Then he became reformer, Muslim. It's not good to just stay as a Salih. Even though, Alhamdulillah, I ask Allah to make us among Salihin and Muslihin. Amin. But it's not only good to be Salih, which means I'm doing my uh, rituals, I'm praying five times a day, in Ramadan I'm fasting, when it's uh, time for zakat, I take money from my pocket and I pay zakat. Alhamdulillah, I'm a good Muslim. If you think like that, then it's a big danger. Put line under that. If you're doing only that, you are in a, into a big danger, brothers and sisters. Why? Because you are not reforming. You are not doing any sulh. And there is also something connected with salih and mustah. Salih to yourself, you are salih, you are doing all the righteous things. All the people will like salih. Everyone will like salih. Because, oh, mashallah, mashallah, look at this boy, look at this man, praying five times a day, never leaves the salah, always, mashallah, half of, they praise him. Once the salah come into the category of muslim and will go and advise a brother, go and tell something to Sheikh, go and say something to the Mufti Sahib. Uh, just trying to make things, you know, idea here, let's do this, let's not do that, this is, you know, I read that this is not right. The moment he start doing the sulah, Reforming, everyone will hate him. Everyone will hate him. That's why it's the highest degree. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what do you think? He was salah or muslim? Hmm. What? Both. What or both? Both. Both, right? Exactly. He was both. Before the risala, before the message of Islam or the Quran or the revelation, he was salah. So whole Kuffar Quraysh and whole Meccan and everyone like him. As Sadiq Al Amin, the most truthful, the most honest. Everyone who likes him. The day he received the message from Allah and Allah told him, Go and tell them to worship one Allah. No idol worship. Be good to your parents. Don't harm others. Don't harm the animals. Don't harm your slave. Free, free your slave. And when he said, God received all these messages and instructions, he went out and he started saying, Qulu la ilaha illallah Say la ilaha illallah, you will be successful. These idols will not gonna help you anymore. Oh man, this, this man is making problem to us. When he goes to the businessman that you know, you should not overburden your animals or camels and you should you know, pay on time to your uh, labors. This man is making problem to us. Now everywhere he is going and trying to reform, people start hating him. So that's normal. That's normal. If you are into da'wah, you will face kind of difficulty, you know. If you go and tell your brother or your sister or Muslim or non-Muslim, you will find this. So it does not mean that you will leave da'wah. Because again, I told you there are many things linked with salah and muslim. If God forbidden, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala... And before this, I'll tell you a hadith, an authentic hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to demolish a whole city. Why he wants to demolish the whole city? Of course, Allah can do everything. But the reason behind it, the whole city is involved into sins. Sins, this person is eating riba, interest, this person is involved into a lot of bad things, this person is drinking, this person is doing haram stuff, every, everything, the whole city is corrupted. Allah decided that he will destroy this city. He commanded one of the angels, that go and demolish the whole city. The angels going all the way to demolish the city, they found one house. It's bright. There's no in it. So they stopped, said, let's check what is this. So they checked. In that house, they found Abid. Abid, one slave, slave of Allah, one uh, person who is worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praying, very pious, 
the, you know, the, the book of uh, Quran or whatsoever at that time he is having, he is reading on it and he is making dhikr of Allah and a lot of things. So the angels got confused a little bit. Said, let's go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and tell Allah that, you know, there is, there is a one good man, super good man. So they went all the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they said, Ya Allah, there is a good man in that city who is worshipping you day and night. We checked him, we observed him, he is worshipping you, he's a good man. You know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said? Go back and start the destruction from him. Let him to die the first one and then the whole city. Why? Why? Because he was Salih. Because he was not even bothered to talk to his you know, neighbor or his friend or when he is going out and dealing and buying stuff for himself to even advise these people that what you are doing brother is wrong. What you are doing brother this is harmful. What you are doing brother it's not right. He was just to himself. Quran, Salah, this and that, Alhamdulillah. So only being Salah is not good, it's always to be, you know, one step further. I'm not saying even, you know, Salah is not good, no, Salah is a good person. But, if you don't upgrade yourself, as I said, Iqra, upgrade yourself, educate yourself, develop yourself. If you're not developing yourself, then it's a straight line. And those who are into medicine and doctor, if you have a straight line in the, in the monitor, what it means? You're dead. Even though you are praying, you are mashallah doing a lot of things, but it's straight, there is no harakah, there is no movement, you are not doing anything for the sake of Allah, you are not doing anything, you are not trying to reform the community and people around you. So, there is a big possibility that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might get angry on you because you are not doing anything extra to the people. So, calling others to Allah is more important than doing extra ibadah, which is act of worship. Very important process. If you what do you notice here in this slide? Who noticed something different? Okay, I'll go back, 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 back. Come back. Okay. What is different? You're still sleeping, right? Back, 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 back. Uh, what is different? Okay, what about it? Back, 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 back. Are <laughs> you? Okay. Come on. You're, I'm sure you're sleeping, but you're just pretending because I came all the way from Kuwait, so you don't want to show that you're sleeping. So, say, what, what is different? The last time you sleep may not be that interesting. <laughs> okay, Sheikh Sab, what is different? Tell me something. <laughs> MashaAllah. Brother Ali said, red color. Red color, right? All the slides are black. I told him, look, black, 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 right? It's red color. Simple. And because it's very important, no, it's underlined and it's red color. It means it's very important. Something very important. Don't forget your Muslim brothers and sisters and fellows and friends and only focus on those who are not Muslim. By the way, this is a big, big misunderstanding that we think da'wah means calling the Muslim to Islam. No. This is not da'wah means. Literally, da'wah means what? Literally, linguistically. No, 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 literally, da'wah. The word da'wah only. What da'wah means? Invitation. invitation, right? Did it say it's invitation for non-Muslim between brackets? It's a da'wah. What is the da'wah about? Man da'a illallah. Who call to Allah. Is it only to Allah between the brackets, non-Muslims? You want to make someone closer to Allah. That's it. Muslim, non-Muslim, your brother, your mother, your father, doesn't matter. You have to take a person who is far away from Allah and you have to make him closer to Allah. That's your duty. We sometimes focus on non-Muslim, this part, and we forget our own fellow brothers and sisters and friends and whatsoever. And this is another issue that we, we leave our own people and then we focus on the others. May Allah reward Brother Firdos, look what he did. Since he's not here, yani mashallah, he is day and night, he's praying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give hidayah to his mother. Say Ameen. 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 Yani, he is thinking, yes, he is doing da'wah, but he is at the same time thinking about his mother. This is the one of the reasons that he brought uh, the mother here all the way so she will witness the Muslims, she will see the Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant her hidayah. Ameen. Ameen. So, so it's very important to think about those who are near, near, you know, to you, your sisters, your, your neighbors, and whatsoever. 
Subhanallah, you know if you neglect, if you neglect anyone of your own friends, brothers, whosoever, they are not closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By the way, it's not only, it's not only that when I say you have to call Muslims and non-Muslims, because shaitan is very smart. If I don't give you explanation, he will make a small barrier on my, on my talk and on my words and will make you think only that. That will mean make a person get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does it mean that a Muslim fellow, my Muslim fellow, he is involved into drugs and he is involved into many bad things and alcohol and this and that and then I will take him and make my efforts to make him closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is part of it, but this is not the da'wah. Da'wah means that I will make a person closer to Allah. Let's say, if a person, my own fellow brother, whosoever, colleague, he is praying with me, he is fasting with me, he is doing good things with me, he is doing everything to be honest with you with me, plus he is smoking. Now it's my duty to make him, I will not say that, okay, he is fine, if he is smoking, I will leave him. No, no, no. If he is doing something, even one or two things bad, now it's my duty with wisdom and mercy go and talk to him and this shows the, the tolerance and, and mercy of Islam. That I will just not go and say that you, you know, how come, how dare you, you know, praying and you don't feel Allah, you should quit smoking. He will quit talking to me if I do this. So it's my duty to at least make him to reduce, to reduce, to reduce, then get closer to Allah by reducing or by stopping cigarettes. Didn't he come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He's leaving a sin, and obviously if he's leaving a sin, he's getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's very important. We forget our family members, and we focus on the Muslims, and all those Muslims, if they have a little bit faults, we have to make it correct with hikmah, with wisdom and mercy. This happened with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was giving da'wah, and this is exactly what happened. He is standing and giving da'wah to the Kufar Quraysh. I'm saying like this, it doesn't mean that you know this is Kufar Quraysh, I'm just explaining, right? So he's standing in front of people and he is giving da'wah. Oh people say, La ilaha illallah, I am Prophet of Allah, I need good for you. And he is going on, and these people used to you know, laugh at him, he used to say, oh, kadhaab, liar, majnoon, uh, crazy, things. But still, he is going on and on and on and talking to these people. While he is talking, while he is talking, a blind person came to him. A Muslim blind person came to Prophet. He does not know what's going on, but he's only hearing the Prophet ﷺ somewhere. So he went to the Prophet ﷺ, and while he is standing here, he came to him, he is blind, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, tell me something, I have some questions, I have this and I have that. So, because he is involved وسلم, with the people, and this person is coming and saying, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah. That's a normal human act. The Prophet ﷺ said, and he started talking. What he just did, just like this, yeah. he just moved a little bit and he started continuing. Because what he thought that he's only a Muslim, he's already a Muslim, he just needs some clarification, right? So he said, okay, I will tell you later. But he didn't tell him, but he just stepped away from him and he started talking to me because of this act. Imagine, because of this little act, Allah Almighty revealed one ayah in the Quran. Abasa. And the name of this ayah is Abasa. That he frowned and turned away from a blind person when he came to him. Imagine, sometimes we neglect our friends and families and we think we are the super people because I am Muslim, I am praying, I am involved in da'wah, I am involved in so-and-so center and whatsoever. And we start looking at the other people that they are down, they are you know, small. And this is a big thing. Prophet ﷺ just moved away from him. That's it. He didn't say, how dare you coming in between me and other prophet, I'm talking to the people. Nothing. He just came to him, Ya Rasulullah, I want you to teach me something. And Prophet ﷺ just turned away from him. Just one step and he started giving the da'wah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They give the ayah that will be recited until the day of judgment. So it's a lesson from all of us, those who are working in a da'wah field. Coming back to the da'wah and the importance of the da'wah. Now I want to ask you, how many of you gave da'wah to your family members? MashaAllah. Are you raising your hand or you're yeah. waving? Okay. <laughs> One, two, three, MashaAllah. No, really? Okay, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Okay. Uh, could be a family member, could be a friend, could be a neighbor, right? Uh, what, was, what was 
What was their response? Or whatever, I'm not saying they are Muslim, they are not Muslim, I don't want to get into uh, you know, details, but what was your reaction when you were talking to them and what was their reaction when they heard you? Welcoming? MashaAllah, MashaAllah. It means if they are welcoming, then you are happy, right? Alhamdulillah. What else? Who raised his hand? Uh, Sheikh Amin? Just uh, doing uh, our talk, and I don't mind about uh, the request, but uh, in some Yeah, so I'm talking about family members, friends, neighbors, those who you know, not on the street, right? This is what you meant. Okay, mashallah. What about the sisters? When you gave da'wah, what exactly happened? Depending on their mood. Oh, depending <laughs> on their mood. Okay. So, uh, can you tell me the both moods, good and bad? Sometimes accepting, sometimes not. Sometimes accepting, sometimes not. MashaAllah. Now we have to understand that while we are giving da'wah, here you know, another thing. Look, you are blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we have to deal with this blessing with wisdom. That's why it's wisdom and mercy. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you hidayah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the blessings to pray five times a day, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you more blessings by mashallah doing rituals and extra rituals, Allah gave you more and more hidayah and more and more blessings by giving your own pocket money and give it for the sake of Allah, building masjid, helping authors, amazing. If Allah also blessed you more and more and more by making you involved in da'wah, well, that's the top thing. But with all these blessings, doesn't it require that you know you have to maintain it? You have to be wise enough to deal with people with wisdom? So when you are giving da'wah, is it just delivering a message, doing your job? Or there is a mercy and compassion while you're doing da'wah? This is very important. I was really, mashallah, what, what Sheikh said here, that I gave da'wah and they accepted. I'm sure, I'm sure that when he gave da'wah he was sincere. I'm, I'm not saying that you are not sincere brothers and sisters. But you have to carry the mercy in your heart. Wallahi, if you don't carry mercy in your heart while talking to the others, then you are only just doing a job. As I did at the beginning. I have papers with me, I'll just go and give it to the brothers. I did my da'wah, alhamdulillah. They accept, they don't accept, they go to hell, I don't care. No, this is not the, this is not the case. Or the da'wah means, you know, I have only few certain things. I just come to a person, brother, I would like to tell you that Islam is peace, Islam is mercy, Islam is that, and Prophet Muhammad is the last prophet, and Allah sent the book of Quran, and we have to read Quran. Quran is a way of life. Salam alaykum. I don't care. You accept it, you don't accept it. No. It's just like a parrot, memorize a few things, and going on and on and on, and that's it. I finish from him, I go to another person, I go on. If there is no compassion, if there is no mercy in your heart, delivering the message to the others, that's it, you are just doing your job. Just doing a job. As you took someone, hey brother, I'll give you $500, I have a bunch of papers, go and distribute it. This is exactly what he will do. He will just walk and he will give. He will not look back, the other people reading it or throwing it, he will just do his job, he will finish his paper, and then they he moved on, that's it. He finished his job, he got his $500 with him, and he walked away. And this is exactly what we are doing with da'wah. We are thinking, alhamdulillah, we are blessed because Allah said, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ So, Allah is blessing me because I'm into the da'wah field, so I don't care. No, 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 you have to care about every single act that you are doing. So that's why it's very important to have a mercy and compassion in your da'wah. For example, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave da'wah to everyone, his family members, his friends, his neighbors. Many stories of him relate to da'wah. But is it only is it only to know that story? No. I'll just tell you something very important, brothers and sisters. Take it, something out of da'wah. Put it in your in front of your eye for your whole life. Allah blessed you to be a Muslim, right? And we are not only Muslim, we are believers. Because there are three levels of Islam. The beginning, once you step into Islam, you are a Muslim. Once you start believing in Allah, in the Messenger of Allah, in the Book of Allah, in the angels, in the Day of Judgment, in Al-Qadr, all the believing principles that we have, then you become a believer, there is a one step ahead, right? And there is the third step as well, which is Ihsan, you know, the level of Ihsan. Which is that, you know, you act everything, you do everything in your life as Allah is watching you, uh, as you are watching Allah. 
But for certainly we are not watching Allah, so Allah is watching us. So we have to take care of every single thing. Now this is just what I want to tell you about level of Islam, but my concern here as a believer. Believer is a good rank. And we are all amongst the believers. Few those have Allah that bestowed his mercy on them, they become from Muhsineen. And there are very few, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also make us from the Muhsineen. Ameen. Now we as a believer, you know what the Prophet said about us? A Muslim fatan kayis. A Muslim, he is a clever and a smart. Which means, it does not mean that, you know, I'm smart, you know, so I can, I can sell the product, so I'm smart, you know. Or I can just go and, and take brother's mobile and put it in my pocket, so, you know, I'm a smart, you know. Oh, that's a thief of skills, you know, it's something else. But, a smart does not mean that, you know, you're just delivering a talk or selling a product or convincing someone to buy a land or, or selling something. No, no, no. The Prophet ﷺ meant, Muslim or Mu'min al Fatan Kayyas, that a, Muslim, a believer, he is a clever and smart because everything should happen to his life or in his life, he should reflect upon it. He should reflect upon it. Even those who came all the way from, mashallah, different countries, you know, Cambodia, Bangkok, Thailand, here and there, Burma. Once you are here, you go back, you have to reflect. You have to give to yourself some time and sit and think as a believer that what I did in two days. If you just think that, oh, two days was mashallah really good, we sat, we laughed, we joked, we ate, we slept and we came back, then there's a problem. There's a big question mark, you know, with, with the believer title that you have. Because if you are not reflecting and pondering of every single thing that you did in your life, then there's a problem. So you have to go back, similarly with me. I have to go back and I have to think, and you have to think that what I exactly did for these two days, what exactly I gained from these two days, and what I gained, how I should use it for the sake of Allah. Just reflecting. Not, not necessarily that you have to take action. You take action, alhamdulillah, nurun ala nur, you know, light upon light. But if you're just thinking and reflecting that what you did and what you will do, that's the best thing. So never ever, if you read a story of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you read ayah in the Quran, you know, no, normally you say, mm, mashallah, mashallah, wonderful, mashallah, and then you flip the page. Tayyib, what's in it? Mashallah, mashallah, subhanallah, okay, then what? What you gained from it? Nothing, oh, very amazing story, heart-touching story, emotional story. What you learn from it is just, you know, you just got a tear in your eyes and, and that's it. No, you have to learn every single thing. And from this incident, we will learn what we should do in our, our da'wah. How we should deal with people in our da'wah. So, it's not only when we read many stories of him related to da'wah in his life, it's not only that we read the story only. No. Because, as a believer, me and you, who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who believes in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who believes in the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he should not just read and go ahead. No. Everyone, I'm not saying this for Imam, or for a Mufti, or for an engineer, everyone. If you are a Mu'min, you have to think of every single thing that goes in your life. So, we should know from everything we read, we hear, we see and watch, the moral of it. Always get the moral of it. What's the moral? Of it? What's the benefit from this story or that story or this incident or that incident? Everything. Not necessary. I'm talking about the Quran Hadith. Yes, Quran Hadith. You have to ponder. You have to extract the faida, the moral of it. But even on daily life, sometimes we just see, watch BBC, CNN, whatsoever, and this is exactly what's happening with the non-believers. What's happening with them is going on Muslim terrorists, Muslim terrorists, Muslim terrorists, day night Muslim terrorists, right? What they become? They become like a recording machine. They go outside of Muslim terrorists, Muslim terrorists. No. We as a Muslim, we don't take anything just like that. If we, we see a news and we see that, you know, so and so they are terrorists. We just don't take that statement and make it a slogan and go to the other people. Yeah, I, no, 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 you have to double check. Yeah, <laughs> Oh, you who believe, again, believe, if anyone comes to you with the news, with an information, what you have to do? What you have to do? Double check. Double check before taking it to the others. So a Muslim or a believer is different than the other people. So we have to take moral and benefit out of what we are reading. 
Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, gave da'wah to everyone, his family members, his friends, and everything. At the same time, he faced lots of difficulties. Lots of difficulties. And his difficulties is not like our uh, difficulties, by the way. So we have to, today, go through a story, one of the story, and inshallah that will be enough, and I love this story, and I use it everywhere, because there is a lot of faith, a lot of moral in it. Once you read this, or we all will read it all together, we will get into it, we will imagine it, then we will extract the fact that how we have to carry the mercy in our heart, the wisdom in our mind, in our action, and then we go further to reach people. So, <clears throat> the story of Taif. How many of you heard the story of Taif? Oh, mashallah. The story of Taif is one of the amazing stories that you know I always read and ponder upon and I get every time benefit from it. The story of Taif is Prophet ﷺ, when he is giving da'wah to the people in Mecca, after receiving the revelation, he became a prophet, he is giving da'wah to the Kufar Quraysh, all people say, La ilaha illallah, you will be successful, they are not listening. All people say, La ilaha illallah, you will be successful, they are not listening. So he said, okay, there is another place, Ta'if, let me go and talk to the leaders, big people in Ta'if. Maybe, maybe Allah will open their heart so they will accept Islam. So he went all the way, distance uh, to Ta'if. The distance from Mecca to Ta'if is 90 kilometers. Can you imagine how long it is if you want to walk 90 kilometers? For how many hours you have to walk? Any engineer here? Calculation, fast calculation? Accountant? Anyone? Google? <laughs> roughly, roughly. Okay. Roughly. Two days. By the way, roughly two days. Imagine yourself now, for the sake of Allah, for the sake of da'wah, and because he been having a mercy in his heart, and he wants to deliver this mercy to the other people, he is walking for the distance which is almost for two days. Walking, not in the car not on donkey or horse or camel, nothing. And do you think they have a mashallah roads at that time, lights, and, and some you know, uh, places that you can stop uh, for fuel or eat something? No. There's sun on top of you and there's a desert. And he was walking for two days or almost 90 kilometers to reach to Ta'if. What he did in Ta'if, he spent in Ta'if for 10 days. 10 days in Ta'if. No one is hosting him. Allahu A'lam how he is managing himself to stay in Ta'if for 10 days. Each day he is going from morning until evening. He is going to the leaders, to the tribes, to the big people. And he is saying, Ya Qawm, O people, say La ilaha illallah tuflah. Ya Qawm, Qulu La ilaha illallah tuflah. O people, say La ilaha illallah. Wallahi, by Allah you will be successful. And they are rejected. He goes to the another tribe. Oh people, say la ilaha illallah. I swear by Allah, I will save you by the will of Allah from the hellfire. Say la ilaha illallah. I will be your hujjah. I will be the excuse on the day of judgment that I will take you to the paradise. And they refuse him. Look at the mercy. If he does not have mercy, and if we does not have mercy, we will not do what he is doing. Wallah, if we don't have mercy and sincerity in your heart for the da'wah, the first person you go to, and he will tell you, go away. You will say, okay, and you will go away. You will leave that one. You will leave that one. But look at Prophet and his mercy that he's going to one person, rejected. Another person, rejected. Third person, not only rejected, beaten. Fourth person, being pushed. Another person, you know, people accusing him. So he is spent, and they neglected him. They pushed him. They also hit him. Can you imagine that a person going all the way to the people with the message of mercy and giving, delivering the message of mercy and what's happening? He's been rejected, ignored, pushed, hit. SubhanAllah, not only that, the tribe leader, the tribe leader, what they said, they went to the children and they said, hey children, when you see this man, this is the crazy man, sallallahu alayhi wa go and hit him with the stones. And you know when, when the small kids, you know, for them it's a play, to be honest with you. You know, having a stone in his hand, and when they see this man who is not belongs to Ta'if, a stranger man or a stranger, throw him with a stone. So all the way where, where he is walking, he is just receiving stones from here and from here. He was 
beaten and he was, you know, throw, uh, he, he was, there was uh, stone thrown on him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and it says in the narration that he was bleeding. He was bleeding because of, imagine, the stone can make you bleed. How many times he got these stones? It was, it was a rain of stones on him. Because one stone will not make you bleed. Two stones will not make you bleed. Ten stones, Allah, he will not make you bleed. Until there is continuously showering, you know, the things coming on him from day to night. Until he starts bleeding. The narration said that he was bleeding, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, until his blood went all the way from his body until to his ankle, and his slipper was, you know, uh, stick to his ankle from the amount of the blood. What he did? What he did? Can you imagine what he did? He's going for 10 days and, and this, is, this is what the compensation that he's getting. Not even thank you for coming or thank you for offering, but we are not interested. No, this was not the case. The case was that he was pushed, he was ignored, he was hit, and at the end he is bleeding. So, imagine yourself. Imagine now yourself that you are coming out and giving da'wah. And once you reach to ask someone, he will say, excuse me, I want to talk to you, and he will do it. Just, just like this. What will happen to you? Put yourself into that. If not, you will get angry and you know, punch him back. Or maybe if you are you know, a really good person, you will just leave and you will leave that one altogether. You will say, what is this job? You know, I'm coming here and people are pushing me. This is just a push. Imagine, if you are giving da'wah, just imagine yourself. Why I want you to put you in this situation, imagine with me. Into this station or into that situation, a person is taking a stick and hitting you. What will happen to you? Really, may Allah protect us. I'm not saying that, okay, I want to be in that situation. Because believe me, we cannot bear it. Our iman not like uh, iman of Sahaba of uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa May Allah protect us. We don't want to get into this. But just imagine, imagine, if you are into that situation and a person is hitting you and, and beating you or pushing you, what will happen to you? If someone only argue with you, if someone really argue with you with bad manners and hurt you, try to hurt you, this is what exactly you mean. A person will leave that I saw, personally, I saw people when they got little rough answer from the people, and this is normally what will happen. A person is just going, believe me. The only thing was that he went all the way to the brother. He started giving da'wah. The brother said, you terrorists, you Muslims, problems everywhere. Where are you talking about mercy? He just said that. The brother said, okay, thank you. And he is disappointing and going all the way you know, down. Uh, his, his shoulder is down. And as that sits, that's it, end of the world. That's normal that he didn't do anything. He just, you know, said that you, you know, exactly what he heard from the news, he just said it to the, to the brother. And the brother was completely disappointed. So, keep in your mind, guys, with big responsibility, you have a big reward. With big responsibility, the tests are big. And with a big responsibility, So, with a big responsibility, my brothers and sisters, you have a big reward. And with a big responsibility, you have a big test. And with a big responsibility, you have a big amount of criticism. And that's normal, not in da'wah. This is the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You apply it in your life, you apply it in your company, you apply it in da'wah, it's the same. It's the one rule from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So do you think that the responsibility of the one brother, may Allah make it easy for him, those, uh, the one who's on the street, cleaning the street, is it exactly the same responsibility of a person who is sitting in the office and doing some work? Yes or no? No, right? The one who is working in the office, does his responsibility is exactly the same of the manager or the uh, director of that department? No, right? Even the salary scale will be different. The one who is on the street, cleaning the street, the salary is little. The one who is working in the office, the salary is okay. The manager, the salary is good. And the responsibility, the level of the responsibility is similar. Not only that, the CEO of the company or the, the owner of the company, his responsibility and everything that he is getting is different than the, the other three. 
the manager or the employee or the one who is working in the street, right? If you come and criticize the, the person who is working in the street, his amount of criticism is completely different than the amount of the one who is owning a company, right? He is, if he is gaining, he will gain a lot. If he is losing, he is losing a lot. So same thing, if you have a big responsibility, which is the da'wah, you will have a big reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With it, you will have a big test in your life. With it, you will have a big you know, amount of criticism of people here and there, just telling you names and calling you names and people, you know. So be ready. I'm telling you this so you prepare your mind. Yes, you have to be ready for da'wah, you have to be energetic for the da'wah, but it doesn't mean that you step in da'wah and come on the field and then see different kind of treatments and then you don't know what to do. You will be completely shocked that, oh, okay, I was not ready for this. I was thinking that I will just go talk to the people and they will say, la ilaha illallah, I will go to Jannah and then he will go to Jannah. Khalas. No, this is, not the, no, this is not exactly what we want here or what we are learning today. Coming back to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After the stone and after the bleeding and everything, he was broken completely sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was in pain sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was sad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May I ask you why he was sad? What do you think why he is sad? Okay, mashallah. What else? What else, sisters? What happened to you, mashallah? I praise you at the first and now you're sleeping. What happened? What, what, why he was sad? Yes, we know that he is broken because, you know, what he got. He is in pain because of his bleeding and everything. Why he was sad at the same time? Is it related with the both uh, two no, points? Tell me one expect. He was going to the Jannah. Exactly what, mashallah, the sister said here and the brother said. He was not sad because people didn't hear him. He was not sad because you know he was beaten up. He was not sad that people threw stone on him. He was sad because these people didn't accept Islam and they will end up into the hellfire. Imagine, if this is the case with us, we will be sad and we will be criticizing and we will be cursing just because he didn't listen to me. He didn't appreciate me. He didn't respect me. It's always me, me, me. The Prophet is sad because of them. Look at the level of the mercy and tolerance and the wisdom that he is having that, you know, he's still thinking about them. Look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, after he left, what he did? What exactly happened? While he is completely broken, he went to a place with a tree and he just wanted to have some rest. An angel from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came down all the way to him. And he said, Salamu alayka ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he said, Ya Rasulullah, if you give me a command, I will bring these two giant mountains because, because Ta'if is located surrounding the mountain. So Ta'if is in between and there's a big mountain here and a big mountain here. So the angel was saying that, Ya Rasulullah, give me one single command. Give me one single signal. Maybe just shaking your head and I will complete wipe out Ta'if for you. I will bring these two giants mountain and I will just go and smash the whole Ta'if. Great opportunity, why not? Prophet ﷺ bleeding, he is broken, he was beaten up, he is in a really sad condition. What exactly وسلم, said when the angel offered him this? The Prophet ﷺ said, no, don't do it. No, don't do it. I hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah will make their generation, their progeny of Ta'if, people of Ta'if who will come later on, who will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at at that condition, horrible treatment for 10 days, an angel offering him to wipe out the whole Ta'if. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him two things. Number one, no, don't do it. And the other thing, he said, I hope from Allah, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the people of Ta'if, the next generation and the next generation and the next generation, will one day, inshallah, accept Islam and they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, can you imagine, brothers and sisters, what kind of thinking he had? What kind of strategy he had? What kind of, subhanAllah, brain that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him that he's thinking of? 
Nowadays, and this is what you call this, when, when a person says that, you know, I hope the people of this place one day will accept Islam. Generation. How many years in one generation? How many? Hello? In one generation, how many years? We are the generation. You are the generation, Maka. May Allah bless you. <laughs> bless us with you. But in one, okay, century is 100 years, right? Generation. A generation is roughly 32 to 35 years old. This is what generation you call. So that's why the grandmother said, I, I saw my three generation. Means like his, her son and the, the, the son of son, 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 something like that. So anyways, when a person is talking about generation, what he's talking about? Who can tell me? Come out from a little bit from this scenario, coming into the dunya, and think when a person tells you like after 35 years, we will do this and this and this. What, what do you call it? What do you call it? Optimism, mashallah. What else? Merciful. Merciful. But I'm just talking about a businessman. He's coming here and he's offering something to mashallah Islamic Union that inshallah after 30 years, we will have five buildings or 10 buildings of Islamic Union. So, mashallah, Islamic. What was that? I cannot hear you, sorry. Wisdom. wisdom. There's a wisdom behind it. But what I mean, this is called also a strategy, right? He have, he's having a strategy for la, for coming 30, 35 years, that inshallah after 30, 35 years, instead of having one building, we will have five buildings. So instead of having uh, 10 projects, we will have 100 projects whatsoever, right? Now, we are here living in this world. You have seminars and conferences of positive thinking. A strategy, uh, and, and I don't know what you call it, the, the planning and the strategy and all this thing. Prophet ﷺ taught us from here, from this incident, that, no, there is a strategy after 30 years or 35 years, inshallah, I hope from Allah that they will be a Muslim. So we learn from this. Now, look at the mercy of Rasulullah when he thought about these people who, you know, beat him and who hit him and who did all these things to him. Look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by choosing a prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as a mercy to whole humanity. Look at the mercy of Islam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept everything in Islam, it's all about mercy. Either it's dealing with yourself, either it's dealing with your parents, either it's dealing with your spouse, dealing with the animals, with your maids, with your slaves, everything is all about mercy. We cannot tell people this because we don't know about it. We have to learn, so we have to convey this message to be Muslims and non-Muslims. And of course, look at the level of the to uh, tolerance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in our religion. Look at the peace of this religion that alhamdulillah, even at that horrible situation, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't take his revenge. It was, by the way, 100% eligible for him to do it. 100%. He's a prophet. If he says yes, shaking hand, shaking head, the whole life is wiped. There will be no life anymore in this world. So, Look at the vision of Rasulullah and this is what I was talking about, the vision of Rasulullah that we are studying nowadays, these conferences about the vision and about all these things and stretch deep. Lessons from the mercy of Rasulullah from this incident. Now we want to come into the lesson, lessons of Rasulullah We got the whole idea, we know how he suffered وسلم, during 10 days. He was completely into a miserable situation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and how he reacted when the angel came. Now we want to apply this in our da'wah, in our life, while we are giving da'wah, while we are outside talking to the people, how should we deal it? If people ignore you, my brothers and sisters, if people argue with you, if people come and push you, hey you, just leave me alone. You are going here to give him da'wah, right? You are just going there to tell him, my brother, I just wanted to tell you that, you know, about Allah, about Rasulullah. Leave me. Go away. They deal you with the bad manners. What you should do? What you will do? Patience. Patience. Calm down. Jazakallah khair. Patience, calm down. Even if he push, pushes you? MashaAllah. No idea about it. Show your character. Show your character. Okay. Who else? Tasbir? Tasbir. Yes, patience, sabr. Yeah, tasbir, yeah, yeah, you make yourself uh, tasbir. This is what you mean? Sabr by tasbir? Yes, okay. What else, sisters? You are laughing there. I caught you. Yes. <laughs> Actually, in this, I'm laughing because in, in this time, maybe we say, oh, if me, after 
to you. If you listen to me, then it's a blessing for me. But if you don't listen, it's a blessing for you. I just uh, convey you these things like I did to my Christian sister. Christian sisters that come in my house. I tell you about this now. If you listen and then apply it, it's a blessing for me and for you. But if you don't accept it, then it's still a blessing for me. It is blessing, it's still a blessing for me. Not for you. So basically, Alhamdulillah, everyone is saying here patience, blessings, sabr. I hope, inshallah, we are able to, or we will able to do it. Because believe me, talking here on the on the seat, on the chair, is different when you are in the ground or on the ground and dealing with person who is with an angry face or a red face and pushing you and telling you, leave me alone, get out, shut up, whatever, you know. So this is different. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us sabr. What we learned from this incident of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa do I really need this? No, right? My voice is enough for you. Do I need it? It's okay, it's okay right? Inshallah. Those who are at the back, it's okay, inshallah? I'm a khatib, so it should be possible. Yeah, no problem, inshallah. So, what we learned from this, just this one story. By the way, if you go through the whole stories of the da'wah, you will gain a lot, a lot, a lot. But this is the basics that you can apply in your own life when you go out and give da'wah. Number one, as mashallah Sheikh said here, patience, have sabr. Basically, what should you do? Nothing. Basically, this is big. Number one, when you are outside, and you are receiving something harmful, disrespectful, they are, disrespectful uh, they are disrespecting you, ignoring you, pushing you into extent. May Allah protect us from all these situations. But whatsoever happened with you, you do nothing. Okay? Tayyip, why you do nothing? Because you are weak? Because you are weak? No, right? I'm not saying nothing because you are weak. Or because we are a weak ummah. No, inshallah, we are not weak ummah. Alhamdulillah, we have du'at. Those who are here came all the way from across of the world. May Allah reward Islamic Union for, for arranging this. And man, inshallah, once you go back, you will be more powerful and more with more strength to give da'wah to the others. Ameen, ya Allah. So, you are not weak. It's not that you do not nothing because you are weak. You are not weak. Because you are not weak. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he was not weak. He got the most powerful option when the angel came to him. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that the angel is there? The angel is there just waiting for one sign, only one sign. So he was not weak, to be honest with you. It's like telling nowadays a person is having a nuclear weapon with him. The button is with him. He can press the button and the other country is gone, right? But with it, with this option that Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is having, what he said, don't do it. So this shows us that it's not that, you know, I'm going and giving da'wah with a person who's, mashallah, double size of me, you know, healthy and bodybuilder, and I'm giving da'wah, so if he pushes me, I said, okay, fine. I don't want to get trouble into him, you know, he will just put me in a corner and, and make me uh, catch up, you know. So it's not, this is, the, this is the case. Not because I am a weak and he is, mashallah, you know, bodybuilder. No, 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 no. I can reply back to him. If he pushes me, I can punch him, not only push him. If he says something bad to me, Allah gave me a tongue, I can reply back to him ten times more. It's, it's possible. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messengers telling us, because it's the deen of rahmah, it's the deen of mercy, you should not reply back. So, this is exactly what happened. If people give you a hard time while giving da'wah to them, what should you do? Giving da'wah? Yeah, the, the answer here is what? What you should do now? Nothing. But with nothing, there is something now you have to do. What, what, you, what you got lesson from the, from, the, from the hadith? When the angel came, two things from Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. What? What these two things are? Okay. Jazakallah. This is exactly, Jazakallah. And this is exactly what you have to do, all of you brothers and sisters. In any situation, if people reject you, if people reject you for da'wah, you have to apply two things what Prophet ﷺ applied. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, for all of us, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنٌ There is a best example for you, or brothers and sisters, in Rasulullah ﷺ. So take his example in your life. 
I was talking a few days ago or yesterday or the day before with the stu uh, students in the university talking about the manners and uh, you know the character of Rasulullah and I just mentioned the same ayah. I said if you just anyone ask you who's your prophet, you will just have few words. And we all alhamdulillah love our Prophet Muhammad. We can die for him, sallallahu But if you ask like what about him, you will say he's a merciful messenger, he's a last and final prophet, he's a good man. Uh, he has mercy to the human being. You just mention these few basic points and that's it. What do you know really about him? How he used to deal with his wife? How he used to deal with his companion? How he used to deal with his enemies? How he used to deal with the kids? Because if you don't know all these things, you cannot be able to deal with your friends, with your businessmen, with your kids, with your neighbor, with your Muslim and Muslim friends. So it's not only that we have a slogan that yes, Prophet uh, Muhammad is the last prophet, he is a merciful prophet, he is a good man, he is the last and final messenger, there is no messenger after him, and that's it. No. What about his seerah? Do we really make an effort to read about his seerah and his, his you know, way of life dealing with the, with the Muslims and the Muslims and kids and wives and everyone? Ask yourself. I will not get ask you. And then you will know how really love yeah, you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unfortunately, we show the love, and this is, this is a serious issue, we show the love once a year. Once a year, right? We show the love. Honestly, this is not a love. If you just show that love and then you neglect his, his seerah through all the year, no, you have to check yourself. So that's why it's very important to know from any incident, as I said, believer is a clever and smart. If you read anything from the Quran, anything from the Hadith, or anything throughout your life, take the benefits from it. Take the lessons from it. So the lesson from here, that if you are giving da'wah and someone is rejecting your da'wah, if he accepts, alhamdulillah, if he re re rejecting your da'wah, what you will do? First of all, nothing, you don't reply back, but you have two options. One, don't harm him back. Second, make du'a for, for that person. No harming and making du'a for him. And of course, the patient comes here. So by default, the patient is here. Giving da'wah to a friend or a colleague, on the street or a family member. When you do that, you have not replying back to them, but also make dua for them. These are the two things. Number one, not replying back to them. Number two, make dua for them. And look at the mercy of Rasulullah here and his tolerance and the, in this deen, that he is teaching, keep teaching us these things in the incident. So I don't have to tell other people that, you know, because it says uh, in Quran, in certain verse, in certain place, Islam, the Rahmah, or the Islam is the religion of peace. No. There is a peace in single action of, of Rasulullah and of course in our life. Look, simple as that. We, we don't claim, we practice it. We don't claim mercy, we practice it. We don't claim tolerance, we practice it. We don't claim, you know, harmony, we practice it in, in our deen. So there's a big difference that you know you are just telling and then you are practicing. So whoever would like to know about you know deen, we say well we practice it in our life. We respect our mothers every day, not on only on Mother's Day. We respect our father not on Father's Day only because you know it's a father day, no, I respect him, I kiss his hand and head every day. I respect this and I, I do that because it's my duty to give charity, not only the, the, the World Charity Day or the World This Day or the World That. No, no, I have to do because I'm a Muslim, I have to do in actions. So, this is very important to know that this deen has the teachings of tolerance and mercy and harmony. Da'wah requires three things. Mercy, wisdom, and patience. At the beginning, what I told you, as the Sheikh said, if you don't have mercy in your heart, then you are not doing that. <laughs> if these three things, there are many, but these main three things, if, if not involved in your da'wah, then you are not really doing that. If you are really just going and, and handing over a conflict to someone without even care that, you know, at least just have rahmah that I'm going and giving this thing. I cannot talk. I don't have time to talk. He's just sitting there in the bus or, or whatsoever. I just go and say, brother, this is a gift for you. That's it. And I have to have rahmah in my heart. That, Ya Allah, make him this small booklet, make him to accept Islam from. You have to have mercy, number one. Wisdom, number two. Now, wisdom, what it means? To think how I approach him. Shall I come from this side, or from that side? When I jump from him from top, so I can just jump. Except the stuff, you know? So how how exactly what, what was the means? 
knowledge. Of course, this is the basic knowledge. But what wisdom means? Like that I have to make a planning and I have to draw and then think the... What does exactly wisdom mean? Sorry? A strategy, exactly. But really, you, for example, you see a person sitting there, you know, you really have to make a strategy and take your mobile and do some calculation and think about it. How the person will go, you know? So, so what exactly, what does wisdom mean? Right? Yes, sir. Logical reasoning. Logical reasoning. Okay, mashallah. Anything from sisters? No, brothers, mashallah, they are more active. Anything? Wisdom, wisdom <laughs> is to put something in the right place. You know, using logic, using, you know, strategy. This is all come from the wisdom, of course, you know. But for example, for example, if my friend smokes, for example, if my friend smokes, now I have two options here. He's a good friend. He prays with me also in the masjid. But Allah gave him this disease that he is smoking. So, shall I go and tell him, brother, why are you smoking? Shame on you. Look, look at yourself. Are you smoking? Come on, grow up. Shame on you. And I leave. Right? This is what's first scenario. The second scenario is, I'll go to the brother. And I'll say, salam alaikum, brother. How are you doing? Good, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Bro, I just have something really new to talk about. Yes, what is it? Look, bro, I really love you for the sake of Allah. Because he's my friend, right? So I have to tell him that. I love you for the sake of Allah. And wallahi, because I'm concerned about you, your health is more, you know, uh, precious than, than anything else. By smoking, you're harming yourself, and this might go to your family, to your kids. So, brother, I can't, I can't, you know, I, I smoke a lot, I cannot, you know, I have to have nicotines in my body, blah, 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 all these, you know, silly uh, things. You can tell him, brother, just you know, think about yourself. Think about your family. Think about Allah. You're just, you know, wasting your money for... So, when you just talk to him with mercy and with hikmah, you know, this is it. You talk about mercy and hikmah. Both ways, I'm telling him here that, you know, you smoke, shame on you, you should not do that, grow up, and I leave. And in this condition, what I did, I said, you know, just, you know, your health is better than you. Your wife, you know, deserve better health. Your son, your daughter, you should not do this. Mashallah, you're praying five times a day, you're a good Muslim. You shouldn't consider that. And I leave. It does not mean after my advice, he will take the packet and he will throw it. No. But he will keep thinking about it, that my brother came to me. And if you have the mercy in your heart, Wallahi, Allah will transfer that mercy in his heart. So he will think about it. He will think. My brother came to me and giving me a sincere advice, really, why I'm spending that much of money, you know, every day, one packet and whatsoever, my breath is bad, my health, and yes, it will go to my wife, it will go to my son, you know what, I will quit. So there, this is the wisdom that you put thing on the right place. Otherwise, if you don't use wisdom, you're gone. Your da'wah is just, you know, you're talking to the people with no any understanding, and then you will leave. And the third one is what? Sabr, as the brother said. Again, in the first place, what I did, shame on you, this and that, grow up. Of course, I'm saying that because he's my close friend. I can tell him whatever, you know, I can even hit him. But I'm just telling him that, and what I did, I just walk away, right? I have no sabr to, you know, prepare my mind. I have no sabr to tell him nice words. I didn't have a sabr to just sit with him and talk to him and say, th think about it, and I left, no. This is exactly what's lacking in our da'wah, that we don't have sabr. I gave him da'wah today, tomorrow he should come wearing a, you know, a cap in his head and in the masjid. No, this is not, it should, you know, I know a person, mashallah, for 10 years, this sister from the States, 10 years, she is giving da'wah to her parents, 10 years. She accepted Islam, she became, mashallah, super da'iyah, she is active, very active in Kuwait, for 10 years giving da'wah to her parents. Till today, they are not Muslim. You're thinking that I will tell you after 10 years they accepted Islam? No. For 10 years she is giving da'wah to them, and till today, they didn't accept Islam, but look at the summer that Allah gave the sister, that she's continuing with the da'wah. She's continuing with the da'wah. You know, whenever there's an occasion, Eid, whatsoever, she buys a lot of gifts, you go and gives her, it gives them and whatsoever. This is called hikmah. It might take maybe 10 years, maybe 20 years. It doesn't matter. But what's matter that you have to do it continuously. This is the most important thing in da'wah to have these three things, my brothers. 
I will come to this as a da'iya, this slide, as a da'iya, someone who called people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Da'iya, we all know the word da'iya, right? The one who works in da'wah, we call it in Arabic da'iya. So I'm a da'iya, for example, the brother's da'iya, something like that. You are in da'wah, always into a win-win situation. Who knows win-win situation? Do you know win-win situation? Have you heard about it? Only few? Who heard about win-win situation? MashaAllah. Okay. So shall we just take a small break for 10 minutes, and then inshallah we will explain this win-win situation because this is very important for all of us because we are into this win-win situation, inshallah. 10 minutes break, and then we will start what 